The silver dragon Terendelev, the defender of Canabras, fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Okay, find the other survivors. Kian, are you here? There you are. Okay. At least we both made it. Oh, I should set to. I'm gonna. Well, let's come up a little closer or something. There we go. I just don't like using the uh, default tactics. So I have a question. What is. So I've got that and Tangle, and I've got Cure Light Wounds as my base. Divine Zap. Unleash a divine power against a single target. So that. I assume that that. Oh! Wait, really? No. Is that? That's just a basic spell? Okay. I didn't even know that that was that. I'm um, difficulty class 14. That's it. So what is this one? Flare. No. Um, so divine zap. Does this actually do damage? Uh, divine damage. Successful save halves it. The spell or ability can be used in automatic mode. I love that they added that. I didn't really realize they had an automatic mode to start. So I guess... Maybe my plans of <laughs> having a weapon are going to go out the door because that, that does seem like a not so bad idea. Um, okay, I've got to... Let me just see what also is in my bag. Anything? I don't think they like start you with anything, right? No, just the crossbow. Okay, so we'll just leave that. Keen, what do you have, honey? You've got charge and just like kind of the basic stuff. Perfect. Ah, no. And then you've got bite, right? As your, uh, as your attack. Yeah, there's bite in all four slots. And tail. Oh, wait, really? They added that? So your tail does damage too? <laughs> I love that. Okay, let's go this way. I think the best part about this mod, though, um, is because it's not, like, in the base game in the base game, um, and it's obviously a mod, um, I'll, uh, I'll tell you about the... Oh, I guess I was finishing. I'll just finish before, so that way I don't forget my thought. But the best part is, like, people don't recognize that you have, like, a tiny dragon rolling around with you, uh, which is super uh, entertaining to me because it's, like, he's, he, he's, he's not super tiny. Like, you see him, uh, and nobody really recognizes it, and I don't know why, but that amuses me. But a small woman with messy brown hair winces in pain, uttering a stream of curses through clenched teeth. She's pinned to the ground by a couple of weighty boulders. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? I feel them all right. One say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me. But my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Yeah? Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendalev healed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Nope. Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? She lets... Uh, do, am I gonna get... I think I tried the this one. I have a negative one in athletics. <laughs> oh, we don't have to rely on brute strength for this. Oh, let's find something to use as a lever. Yeah, I feel like no matter what you pass this check. You quickly find some suitable sticks and you free the wounded woman from the rubble without even breaking a sweat. <laughs> Look at you. It's good to meet someone who uses brains first and brawn second. Ugh, damn it all. I think it's broken. Oh well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm Anevia Tirabade, of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though? Now that, I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. Well, I'm Sila. Paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendev and fight demons. And, well, I've been fighting for a while now. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendelev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. 
It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's herald with the goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. Yeah, wait till you... Never mind. Yes, but yes. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabrace will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? I love it how Nevia is just sus of everybody, and I love that. I'm... Let me think. I've kind of thought of her backstory a little bit, but I was also thinking I'd develop her as, like, this went. Um, definitely not going to be defiant towards Nevia. Like, because I have the Wuljif romance mod, I don't know if I want to romance Wuljif or if I want to romance Darren. Um, again, <laughs> I love romancing Darren. Um, but I really wanted to use the Wuljif romance mod, and that is the only thing that's, like, 100% stopping me from fully figuring out Abby, so I'm gonna use some of this now to to do that. So, mm. I definitely think just my name is Abby for either romance option would be that person. Good to meet you. Now, tell us all about yourself. See, this is like I personally am never one of those. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm so and so. Let me introduce myself and tell you like every little detail, and then like Sila and Anevia are over here, both just like so. Tell us everything, and I'm just like. No, thank you. Whoa, girl. <laughs> Slow down. Exchanging names is enough for now. We don't have time to be swapping life stories. Thank you. We need to find a way out of here. Yes. Uh, now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far. Only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. To summarize, there are three of us with five working legs, Three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters, beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. Or we could just do it ourselves and not depend on deities. Uh, that could definitely happen. All right, so I guess we're now going to make our, oh, yes, Ex what he said. I guess we're just gonna slowly make our way out of here. Oh, look at it, it's all my stuff that Halrin took. <laughs> oh, so by the way, if you're new at all to this game, you can turn it off, so basically it only shows class equipment, um, which isn't bad, but the only thing is, I like my cape showing, so I, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this, I'm not gonna lie. Because, like, on one hand, I just don't want the armor to show, but I want my cape still there, so there's really no, there's honestly no good way to go about it, so that's fine. We'll just kind of deal with it. I'm gonna take this, and we should be running into Camellia. This whole situation is sus Who's with there? her. The fine apparel of this young half-elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust, and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking you were in a high society party, and not in the dank catacombs under the city. <laughs> I use the word dank and I love that. Her fingers grip the rapier hilt with confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body, so mutilated that at first glance it's hard to tell if it's animal or human. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought, naively it now seems, that the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev, I can't wrap my head around it. I don't think any of us can, to be honest. Not many can withstand a strike from a demon lord, not even Terendalev. I still, I don't know, like, I get, I get why. Because demon lord versus dragon kind of thing. But I, I think it's more the way that it played out. It's just like, 
Huh? Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll go with this one first. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive, albeit underground. Still alive, though. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Tarandalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a mere deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now? We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. I mean, I don't hate that notion as far as, like, relying on yourself goes. Uh, what happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. So, do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? All right, then let's keep moving. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. The height of foolishness, let's yes. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. Yeah, we kind of do. <sighs> okay. I know. Here. You can trust me. I don't know about that, Camellia. I honestly don't, but we're gonna pretend that I do. How's that? Okay. Now I'm kind of curious about my repeatable spell if it actually gets going. No. Okay, divine zap. Did I actually do? Okay, so I did deal two damage. Oh, that's good to know. I feel like this underground area, unless you're on like a super hard difficulty, goes a little. It's like really easy in some ways, which I, I get because like you're teaching all of this stuff. But I still kind of find it funny because once you kind of get into the game and you understand it, you're like, oh, wait, this goes really quick. As Sila gets herself hurt, as I say that. Sila. I'm going to kill this dude. And maybe the... Oh, good. Ah, oh, she moved. Abby moved just in the nick of time for that. Did you miss? Okay. I just want to get the loot in here. I remember the first time I played this, I like completely missed that body. Um, and then the next time I found it again, I was like, ooh. All right, Seela. It's the bonus thing, but non-stacking bonuses. But it doesn't have a bonus. Can I actually, can I give that to him? Oh my God, I can. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Okay, hold on. All right, yeah, no, it literally, it literally does. What is flat-footed? Armor class situations when you're under the flat-footed condition Dexterity bonus. Okay. If a character doesn't have a dexterity bonus, their AC does not change. Okay. Okay. Honestly, that amuses me. Kian, it's all yours, honey. Me and my tiny dragon. Who's actually not that tiny. I'm so excited to be the crazy dragon lady. Uh, this run. It's all I've wanted. I didn't, I didn't know how badly I wanted to be the crazy dragon lady until I realized I, I'm going to get to be the crazy dragon lady. Are you gonna divine zap that? Hmm. Are you even playing a uh, RPG if you don't take all the loot? No. And if you've watched any of my previous Let's Plays, you'll know. We get all the loot and I have no- I make no apologies for it. Wait! A ne- Is that new that a Nevia tries to fight Ish? Like, I feel like on day one she didn't, but it could be wrong. Okay. Anything over here? Why? Okay, I think it was just two on top of each other. No, I can't just walk away. It's got to be here somewhere. 
You struggle to make out the man's features in the gloom. As soon as he steps into the circle of light, however, you realize that you've never encountered a creature like this before. The stranger looks like the work of a vivisectionist who attempted to stitch together a lizard and a man. When do what? The man notices you and freezes. The curling horn protruding from his head casts a malevolent shadow on the cave wall. Lan, did you find it? Who is that? The woman looks just as strange as her companion, like a cross between a cat and a spider. When she catches sight of you, she immediately drops into a fighting stance. Her movement revealed the lethal grace of a wild predator. The do-gooders here to save our mongrel souls, no doubt. Wait, they might know what's going on up there. I'm really not here to save anybody's soul, if that makes you feel better. So <laughs> I sometimes play as a tiefling and I always think it's weird to ask that question so I don't but this is the first time I haven't played as one in a very long time so who are you a tiefling tieflings are the descendants of people who sullied themselves by mating with demons our ancestors would never sink that low we are the underground crusaders the children of the crusades finest Sadly, Underground Crusaders is a bit of a mouthful, so people usually just call us mongrels. <laughs> you just love repeating that, don't you, Lan? Mongrels. That's what the Uplanders call us. But we call ourselves Neethers. Because they're neither a, what is it, Crusader or, um, a demon kind of thing, like, they're just, they're nothing. They're, there's no classification. Not that they're nothing as in like, they aren't anything, but they're nothing as in there's no technical classification for them outside of mongrels. But if you're local, you probably, I mean, I, I wouldn't enjoy that. So neither's is, is actually a really cool way to describe them. No matter what you call us, it's not going to stop our horns, hooves, or tails from growing. So the demons are laying waste to canabras. If things are as bad as you say, then we all have to hurry. You didn't come from the direction of the shield maze. No. Damn it. I couldn't care less about what's happening on the surface, but the maze. I realize that you guys have your own troubles, but we need to be in Canabras. People are dying up there. Please, show us the way out. Yeah, what is this place? This is the hall where we remember the glory of our forebears. Sorry about the mess. Uh, it doesn't usually look like this, trust me. Sometimes we even wipe the dust off the exhibits. This is where the relics of the First Crusaders are displayed. Our lives are short, our glories are quickly forgotten. But this place helps us to remember that we are just as worthy as anyone else. And that our lives are not lived in vain. Huh, the first crusaders? You've been down here that long? That's crazy. Yeah, it is. What are you doing? That's none of your bit. We're looking for a holy sword. It was here, in the center, sticking out of a rock. The sooner we find it, the better. Some kids from our tribe took off for the shield maze. They figured it had collapsed, and now it's their time to go up to the surface, like all the legends foretold. Except they don't have a clue what's waiting for them up there. They're not fighters. And Sul, the chief of our tribe, is dead set against it. He says that now isn't the time for the underground crusaders to take up arms. If we get the holy sword, we might be able to change the chief's mind. <sighs> it's a fool's errand. None of us will be able to hold the sword, let alone use it to save anyone. It's not an ordinary weapon. It's made from righteous heavenly flame and will burn anyone who touches it. Do you think you're special, Lan? I'll pick it up with my teeth and tie it to my hand if I have to. It doesn't matter. An angel's sword and a troop of stalwart mongrels will be able to work a minor miracle. <laughs> uh, speaking of which... You're still here, Wendu, which means that deep down, you know it's possible. She shrugs and turns away. Um, does it really lead to the surface of the maze? Yes. There are other ways up, 
But they are far from here, and after the earthquakes, there's a good chance they've collapsed. But the maze... There's a legend among our people that when the walls of the maze fall, that will be a signal for us, the underground crusaders. That the time has come to go up to the surface and fight the demons in the final confrontation. <laughs> Until then, the people say the maze is shielding us from taking rash actions. I'm the only one in our whole tribe to have been in the maze. And even I don't know if it's true. But the further I went in the maze, the fresher the air became. That means that it really must lead to the surface. I think the interesting thing is she mentions like the fresher the air is. And you would almost think that in some ways the people that had lived there prior would hang out a little bit more for the slightly fresher air. But they don't, and I don't know, I've just always kind of found that interesting. When the ceiling and walls started shaking, the young ones in our tribe lost their heads. They figured the maze was going to collapse, so it was time to go up to the surface. They grabbed whatever weapons were on hand and ran off toward the maze. They think the maze is no longer a danger to them. They've been listening to Wendwog too much. Don't try to blame this on me. Yes, I told them that our people are capable of making our way through the maze. In the future. But I always told them to wait until I had made a map of all the maze's dangers. I warned them a hundred times. But it was no use. My words just went in one ear and out the other. So we'll find the sword faster if we work together. Thanks. An extra pair of eyes can only help. The sword will be easy enough to spot. It looks, uh, swordy. Help us, and in return, we'll get you out of here. <laughs> now we're talking. Let's get to work. It's a good thing we all bumped into each other, isn't it? What? You want to find the sword quickly so the underground monsters bring you back to the surface. So be it. I still think it's so interesting, though, that, like... We've never once referred to them as monsters or anything like that. We've actually, like, been very cordial because Camellia hasn't talked. But, like, she's already assuming that we're, we see her as a monster, like her and Lan, and she doesn't know us. She's just making assumptions based off of prior experiences. And that's very much in her character, and I, I do find that to be uh, interesting. Now, what is that? I'm gonna take this. Am I gonna pass that? I did. Statue of an unknown knight. The technique is crude, but the figure was clearly crafted with genuine uh, feeling. Judging by the style of the armor, the knight is from the first crusade. I do find this area to be really interesting. And the fact that they have what something have here? like that for themselves. The room looks like an improvised museum or perhaps some kind of temple. Kind of, sort of, both is how it feels. Okay, those two. I feel like... Now, what is that? There's this. No. I know it's over there, but I want to make sure I get, like, all what the we have rest of the loot. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to get it first. Then we'll do the last one. <laughs> so that way it's a little bit more, uh in like easier when we go to leave okay perfect let's do this last one it's a sword in the stone a strange flash pierces the gloom and abby feels drops of searing blood running uh, run down her chest the wound healed by terendalev reopens and weeps scarlet but there's no pain or weakness a hazy scene appears a cave chamber this one or another one entirely abby's heartbeat quickens and a stream of thoughts suddenly bursts into her mind thoughts that clearly belong to another treachery they betrayed me, trapped me, stabbed me in the back. My trusted allies, my treasured friends, the people I swore to protect. The people for whom I descended from heaven and came to this turbulent mortal world. There they are, up ahead in the gloom of the cave. 
What are they waiting for? Are they afraid to draw any closer? Do they believe I'm about to die from their traitor's blows? Next to me, a, a quiet moan. A girl with a golden braid lies on the rocks, clutching her slashed side. She refuses to join with the traitors and paid dearly for it. I could have tried to run, but I'll not. Whistle, I still have strength. I must. While recognizing the foreign origin of these thoughts, Abby intuits that she can control them somehow. Let's try to... We're going to try to heal the wounded girl. A spark of healing magic illuminates the eerie, murky scene. Before Abby, the wounded girl opens her eyes and whispers, Lariel, you... You said that everything was going to change soon. You said you and the other warriors of heaven would be leaving us on a grand mission to stop demons forever. Is that true? The frenzy of foreign thoughts comes faster and faster like a rushing river and images flash by one after another. A priestess in colorful robes observing the stars, a young female paladin praying, clutching her glowing sword, a majestic golden-winged angel gazing into the distance, his face covered by a helmet but his voice ringing clear. Only if you're willing, and only if you're ready, there is no going back. Then don't waste your strength healing me, the girl whispers. Your mission is more important. You take care. It is near. They, and so to, not to interrupt this, but to interrupt this, I do like it that if you've actually played this game a few times, this makes more and more and more sense. Like the flashes of what you're seeing and stuff like that. I actually find that to be really, uh, really good writing. But um, to continue, there in the vision, the darkness and the cave stirs into motion. Something massive appears from within its depths. A vague shadow, an outline, a nightmare come to life. A wave of odious chirping and rustling emanates from the shadows. The sound pierces like hot irons lacing, lancing through flesh and bone. The traitors fall to their knees before the shadow in reverent ecstasy. The wounded girl thrashes in her death throes. The yawning chest wound burns hot. White hot, Abby's head pounds with pain, and it's no longer clear whose pain it is. The person called Lariel who sent this vision, or the one unlucky enough to receive it. Um, so we can fight off the illusion. She's got a really low on that. What Abby knows how to resist malign influences as such, no matter its origin. Let's go with Will. Yay, we succeeded. The force of the attack, though originating as a originating in a vision is terrifying. Abby is stronger. She shakes off the pain and torpor, but alas, the one who sent the vision cannot claim the same. He's broken and exhausted. A monstrous shadow emerges from the murk of the cave. It's not real. It exists only in the strange vision or memory, but the thrill of fear it provokes is more than real. The shadow's features starkly resemble those of Daskari, the terrifying demon lord. And if movement is swift as thought itself, the monster's hand is wrapped around the throat of the one, the one they called Lariel. The foolish angel struggling on the rock like a fly with its wings torn off, intones the shadow. Its voice changes as it moves, shifting from a quiet whisper, whispering to a sonorous shout, becoming young, then old and quavering. Where is your goddess, angel? Where is her self-assured herald? How is it that you are dying here alone, so far from the light of your heaven? A strange calm envelops the thoughts of the one called Lariel. He recognizes who stands before him, and he knows he'll never bow down before his enemy. A flaming sword flares to life in his hand, pure, bright, flickering with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam through stained glass. Slash! The blade slices through the demonic creature's flesh, and the monster recoils with a howl, releasing his grip on Lariel's throat. The angel falls back heavily on the rocks. His vitality is ebbing, but his pride remains undiminished. He grips the sword and, with his last burst of strength, plunges it into the rock. Abby senses the vision is fading, the rush of thoughts diminishing like a river running dry. The last thing she hears is this. You will kill me, monster. This I know. But one day, someone will come here and raise up my sword. They'll raise it up and... And so then you have the two options here. One is to punish evildoers and traitors, and one is to save and protect the innocent. Um, I do actually really like where is the descriptor that I was like oh wow that's um so this one he recognizes who stands before him and he knows he'll never bow down before his enemy and I just it really does show the determination of the first crusade of those who kind of started down this path and everything that they went through and I just think that this is a really well written almost like 
introduction to the past and you you get blips of it as you're going and you learn more and more and more but this is such a well-written intro in to to kind of help set the stage and you can kind of take this and do with this what you will depending on who your character is going to be um but abby's gonna save and protect the innocent the vision disappears vanishing in a burst of color abby does not hear the final words but she seems to complete the thought taking it to heart the sword fly the words fly from her lips and with them something else the heat blazing in abby's chest fades away the edges of the scarlet wound close leaving not even a scar behind Looking down, Abby sees the flaming sword in her hand, or rather its outline, the memory of what the sword looked like. With a final surge of warmth and soothing light, the sword vanishes and the light is drawn into her hand. Abby senses that it'll return. All she needs to do is call it. 